Um, LSD is a huge one for marathon running. I've used it successfully and many, many people doing, whether it's trail running, mentorships, who people that train trail runners, marathons, Ironmans, triathlons. Do you think it's pretty common, uh, even aside from your recommendation? Do you think it's pretty rampant? In- <laughs> I would say <laughs> if you didn't take it, you'd be in the 50% or less half that isn't taking it and running. Wow, and sir. Really? One million percent. Wow. Especially trail running. If you go to trail running, you'll literally be the only guy there not dosed in SEMA, I promise. <laughs> so, so, yeah, what what is the thing with LSD and, like, running? The massive thing is that, so, obviously, and maybe not obvious, this is obvious to me, you have, you have a fatty acid in your blood, right? It's not just going to be like, boom, boom, done, right? There, there are intermediaries along everything along the way. So a fatty acid is kind of like this pen. It's, it's maybe too big to do anything at the moment. Mm-hmm. And... Beta oxidation, the cleaving of that first carbon, is just the cost of admission. It's just getting you into the concert. You don't get to get to the drinks yet. You don't get to like the special seating. Just the cost of admission. We have other PK proteins, protein kinases, and they have A, B, C subunits and all this stuff Mm -hmm. that are going to trim it in like different areas and shapes and sizes. So it has different – like not half-life isn't the right word, but – period of time to be used in your blood, if you will. So protein kinase C and protein kinase A are the ones we're talking about with acid. Protein kinase C is going to make the fatty acid cleaved in a manner where there's going to be a longer time for it to turn into ATP. It's essentially going to make it like cutting in half. And now when we talk about protein kinase A, it's going to cut it in half in the exact opposite manner. And now you're going to have a faster usage of fatty acids acutely. We have all these protein kinases in natural ratios. When you take even as little as 20 micrograms of LSD, you are automatically going to favor protein kinase A. The cool thing is it's actually going to do this in a relatively non-cardiac stimulatory environment. And Off the top of my head, it's probably the only compound I can think of that does that combination. So you add that plus a little bit of euphoria, and it's pretty much the perfect long-distance running drug. Question about that. Is there any drawbacks to like um, maybe an individual's ability to feel pain or if if something goes wrong while they're running – would LSD block them from being able to handle that? Because you already have all the endorphins from running for long distances. On top of that, LSD – could that lead to even worse injury? It could, especially if you take – so user error is always the issue here. Yeah. Like people think it's like, oh, I need I need to be a tripping balls for this to work. <laughs> it's, like, it's actually the exact, exact opposite. <laughs> this protein kinase effect happens at what are called like sub-therapeutic doses. Okay. So you could have it in your system and not even know it's technically happening to get the effect you want for it. But let's say maybe you're a little bit soft and you're not Mark Bell and you're like, oh, my feet hurt. You know, like <laughs> they're going to hurt. You know, like you yeah. signed up for this, yeah. you know, and like no one said like <laughs> your shoulders and low back, were going to feel good lifting heavy. Like it's the same concept, right? Mm-hmm. So there is potential for danger there, but that's the same potential with all sports. You know, um, there's a compound called data that I'm a huge fan of. I, I was part of bringing it into the industry recently in the last couple of years, and it works the same way as far as like changing your work capacity in the heavy breathing world. It essentially, there we go. That's uh, Jake's company. Diisopropylamine dichloroacetate. Um, so what it's going to do, it's going to take the essentially the brakes off your force production in your glycolytic or heavy breathing system. So it's called PDH, <laughs> oh, pyruvate dehydrogenase. Uh, it, by altering that, you can continue to be really strong when you're breathing really heavy. And, you know, it sounds awesome, but then the same safety question comes up. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, what if I'm doing something dangerous and it's in the heat and all this stuff? Like, can I die? It's like, well, yeah, you know, because we're going to stop you from being safe brain wise by decreasing force production when you lose oxygen. Yeah. Um, but it, it ends up being all in user error. You know, whenever you come to make a change in biology, you always want to start with the lowest and smallest controllable change possible mm-hmm. because we all know that, you know, epigenetics is how we live. That's the term for like the little protein day to day changes that have to do with genetics. Yeah. Those are going to be compounding and they have way better hearing than any other cell or if you will, or organ system, whatever you want to call it, these cascades have to do with epigenetics are very sensitive and they take really good notes. That's how we adapt over time. That's how you could do something submaximal for four weeks and on the fifth week do something super maximal. Mm-hmm. You know? So people just tend to be too short sighted when they take stuff and they're like, well, I want this all now. And then don't realize, well, if I do this for three consecutive days, how is that going to impact me and how is that different? 
So not to jump around, but whenever I mentor people, I talk about the 48 hour law, mm-hmm. you know, you want to look at things and I'd say shotgun shell like approaches 24 to 72 hours. So if you do something in a 48 hour period, Just because you went to sleep in the middle doesn't mean they're separate days, you know? So doing something today can directly improve or negate what you're going to do tomorrow. And then you have to summate what happened over the last two days, not take them as days one through seven. Mm. Hey guys, if you like this clip, go ahead and comment down below and let us know what you liked about it. All right. Share this with a friend. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. And also we are on Reddit and Discord. All that's down below. All our sponsors and everyone that supports us, down below there too, so you can get whatever you like from us. All right? Peace.